Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Spoth with Smart Enterprise Magazine. I'm, uh, I'm interviewing Jeremy Grant with the U.S. Commerce Department, who's leading uh, NIST. And uh, Jeremy, we just uh, got to see your session. We have a couple of questions to follow up on that. So the first question is, um, what is the current status of the, the NSTIC uh, project? Sure. So uh, NSTIC, uh, by the way, for those who don't know the acronym, for those who might be outside of Washington, it's the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace. Uh, it was signed by President Obama uh, almost two years ago in April 2011, and it's a fascinating, I say that not just because I'm the guy leading its implementation, but really fascinating strategy that calls on partnership with uh, the private sector uh, to create an identity ecosystem, essentially a marketplace where all of us and our friends, our spouses, our neighbors, our kids can soon choose from a variety of different types of credentials as we go online for uh, convenience uh, for uh, transactions that are more convenient, more secure, and more privacy enhancing uh, than what you have today. Uh, it's essentially looking to uh, uh, get us away from the password-based systems that have become both insecure and completely unmanageable uh, in terms of trying to keep track of 25 or 30 different passwords uh, and get us to a better identity infrastructure for the internet that can really help provide a foundation for a whole new way of doing things online. So uh, while the government has issued the strategy, it really relies on partnership with the private sector for its implementation. Uh, we've been quite busy over the last year. Uh, for starters, we funded five pilot programs back in September, uh, awarding a total of $9.2 million across five pilots that are actually testing different types of NSIC aligned uh, advanced credentialing and authentication solutions uh, out in the real world with uh, real service providers and relying parties. So uh, everything from biometric uh, based uh, smartphone authentication that's being used with relying parties uh, like uh, PayPal and ARP, uh, major universities, uh, some banks, uh, to a model for an attribute exchange network that will allow uh, consumers to be able to uh, choose to share different attributes about themselves that, that aren't currently available in the online environment uh, with different entities that they're doing business with in a way that is uh, both secure and, and protects their privacy and respects their control over those things. Uh, Aside from the pilots, we've had tremendous efforts within the government uh, to make sure that the government itself can start to be a uh, stronger consumer of uh, federated credentialing solutions that align with NSTIC. Uh, and we've created a privately led identity ecosystem steering group that is a place really to convene stakeholders from across uh, all sectors, not just outside of the U uh, not just in the U.S., but also from abroad, uh, to talk about how to come up with a framework of standards, policies, operating rules that can actually be a, a foundation for the identity ecosystem envisioned in the president's strategy and an accreditation process for firms uh, participating in it uh, to know that they can actually trust those credentials that are being presented. So uh, no shortage of activity uh, and, and lots of good things going on. So Jeremy, once we have, uh, once we have the um, NSTIC in place, uh, what do you see as the key strategies to promoting adoption of it? Sure. Well, so, you know, NSIC, a lot of its implementation is really focused at the end of the day on, on catalyzing a marketplace, this identity ecosystem. And I think it's something that will be developing over time and, and will be strengthened over time by more participants coming in as opposed to pointing to any distinct point in time when we will simply say, uh, behold, it exists and, and be able to walk away. Um, you know, developing a marketplace, uh, you know, means you're going to need to have a number of uh, entities that are willing to be credential issuers. Uh, you're going to need a really solid base of millions of users who actually want to rely on them instead of the uh, passwords or other types of solutions that they're using today. And arguably, most importantly, you need to have a lot of relying parties, uh, service providers who are actually going to want to trust those credentials uh, in lieu of issuing their own username or passwords or forcing people to create an account time and time again. Uh, you know, if there's a single use case that we're looking at uh, with regard to NSTIC, it's, uh, you know, what my mom, who's, you know, in her sorry mom, you're in your late 60s now, uh, you know, is, is going to be doing three years from now uh, on her tablet when she's logging into her bank, uh, an e-commerce site, uh, her doctor's office, or say mymedicare.gov as a government site. Uh, there's a lot of types of transactions with each of those uh, where she'd like to not have to enter in a password each time. She'd like to have stronger authentication that makes things more convenient. She'd like it for, to be developed in a way that also protects her privacy and gives her more choice about her information. Um, you know, how do we have a single solution that could actually be accepted across all of those sites? Uh, so we'll need interested users, and we've got plenty of those already. Thanks, Mom. And, uh, you know, more than anything else, we also need uh, entities who want to be relying parties who are actually interested in uh, trusting these kinds of solutions uh, rather than continue to force their customers to go through uh, very cumbersome account creation processes where they have to uh, set up yet another username and password. So uh, the more we can get uh, that in, we think you know there's real benefits to companies uh, to trust these solutions. Think about the ability to translate uh, page views uh, to sales 
Um, when you look at statistics, they show that more than half of uh, online shoppers will actually abandon a site or abandon a shopping cart when they are asked to create another username and password. It's just not worth the, the hassle. Uh, so we think there's some real economic benefits in terms of being able to streamline things and make it more convenient. Uh, but we also need more at the table to try and get involved right now in the steering group that we've set up uh, around NSTIC uh, to articulate some, what some of their requirements are and make sure that this is actually an ecosystem uh, that will work for them. Okay. So to wrap up, um, open-ended question, slightly open-ended. What do you see as the, the next couple of milestones and or challenges for all of this? Well, milestones should be fun over the next few months. You know, as I think I mentioned in the first question, we funded a handful of pilots back in September. Uh, most of them have a two-year period of performance. We're only about four, four and a half months in, uh, starting actually later this month. Uh, now that we're in February, for those of you watching this at a later time, uh, we're going to start to see the first pilots actually go live, uh, giving consumers and relying parties a chance to start testing out new types of solutions that are NSYNC aligned. Uh, we're real excited to see... Um, how those all work, how they're accepted, uh, if there's problems with some of them, which since they're pilots, I'm sure we'll, we'll have some lessons learned as well as success stories. Uh, beyond that, in the Identity Ecosystem Steering Group, uh, there's a tremendous amount of activity right now uh, in different committees to start to build a work plan of what's actually going to be needed uh, to drive progress in the ecosystem. Uh, you know, we've got a, a pretty broad array of stakeholders. In fact, as Brett McDowell from PayPal, who chairs the Management Council of the Steering Group, said he's never seen a, a broader, you know, more diverse array of stakeholders. Uh, uh, focused on identity who have actually come together at any one time. So that's a great place for us to start from. Uh, there's a lot of hard work to be done uh, in terms of actually figuring out, you know, what comes next within that organization. Uh, and we need more participants, and it's free to join. So you can do so at www.idecosystem.org. Uh, beyond that, we're also doing quite a bit on the government side to try and uh, make sure the government can be an early adopter. Uh, we're expecting later this spring to uh, launch a pilot for what we've dubbed the Federal Cloud Credential Exchange, which would be an enterprise cloud service that all federal agencies uh, can use uh, to link up with what is becoming a uh, you know, sizable number of uh, federally accredited private sector credential providers that can be used at websites in lieu of creating your own username and password or other type of account. Uh, it's essentially an easy button for agencies to start embracing the concept of, of federation and strong authentication. And as we go live with that and start to roll agencies into that, I think you'll see the government be one of the early leaders uh, in uh, embracing the president's strategy. Great. Jeremy, thank you for your time. This is uh, Andrew Spolf with Smart Enterprise. Thank you.